Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel Microbial World. In this video, we will be studying about hematopoiesis. We will discuss hematopoietic stem cells and types, process of hematopoiesis and its regulation. Hematopoiesis. So, how can we define hematopoiesis? Hematopoiesis is defined as the process of formation, development and differentiation of blood cells. The blood cells are formed from hematopoietic stem cells which are either multipotent or pluripotent in nature. So, multipotent means it is the ability of a cell or stem cell to differentiate into multiple but limited cell types. They can give rise to a specific range of cell types within a particular organ or tissue. Okay? Pluripotent describes the ability of a cell or stem cell to differentiate into almost any cell type in the body. Uh, multipotent cells are having limited differentiation potential whereas pluripotent cells can differentiate into almost any cell type in the body. In the prenatal stage, hematopoiesis occurs in the yolk sac during the first weeks of embryonic development and then transitions to the spleen, liver, lymph node and finally in the bone marrow continuing for lifetime. Hematopoietic stem cells and types. So, hematopoietic stem cells, they are special type of cell present in the bone marrow. They are rare and their numbers are strictly controlled by a balance of cell division, death and differentiation. Hematopoietic stem cells divide generating daughter cells. So, some of the daughter cells they will retain the stem cell characteristics of the mother cell and they will have property of self renewing and they will be able to give rise to all blood cell types. Whereas, other daughter cells they will differentiate into progenitor cells and they will lose their self renewal capacity and they will give rise to a particular blood cell lineage. You can understand this in the next slide. So, as you can see in the figure, in hematopoiesis, a multipotent stem cell differentiates along one of the two pathways, giving rise to either a common lymphoid progenitor cells or a common myeloid progenitor cells. Myeloid cells consist of monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, macrophages, erythrocytes, megakadiocytes, platelets. Lymphoid cells consist of B cells, T cells, natural killer cells, innate lymphoid cells. Okay? So, now we are going to describe the process of hematopoiesis. Okay? So, as we said before, Hematopoiesis consists of the differentiation of a multipotential hematopoietic stem cell into either common myeloid progenitor or common lymphoid progenitor. There are many cytokines and transcription factors that are involved in the regulation of hematopoiesis. So, with the help of these cytokines and resulting transcription factors that are activated, the myeloid progenitor can differentiate into a myeloblast. This myeloblast leads to granulocytes that is basophils, eosinophils or neutrophils or monocytes that is macrophages and dendritic cell development. Also it leads to the differentiation of megakaryocytes into platelets or erythroblast into erythrocytes. And common lymphoid progenitor differentiates into a lymphoblast resulting in the development of natural killer cells or lymphocytes that is T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. Once the B cells get activated in the secondary lymphoid organ, it further differentiates into plasma cells and these plasma cells secrete antibodies. Okay, so this is the process of hematopoiesis. Regulation of hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis is regulated by the presence of cytokines. These cytokines are responsible for regulating the differentiation of multipotential hematopoietic stem cells into specific cell types. So, how they are regulating the differentiation? By the activation of transcription factors. Okay? And these cytokines, it is very important for differentiation of particular cell types. Otherwise, animal dies during embryogenesis. 
Some cytokines that regulate hematopoiesis are granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. It enhances the myeloid lineage and from the name itself you can understand it leads to the differentiation of granulocytes and macrophages. Such cytokines are termed as growth factors. These growth factors are needed throughout the process of hematopoiesis functioning in order to activate transcription factors. Transcription factor GATA2 It is required for the development of all hematopoietic lineages. In its absence, animals die during embryogenesis. Transcriptional regulator BMI1 it is required for the self-renewal of hematopoietic stem cells and in its absence, animal dies within two months of birth because of the failure to repopulate their red and white blood. Other examples of cytokines involved in hematopoiesis are colony stimulating factors, erythropoietin, thrombopoietin, granulocyte colony stimulating factor, monocyte colony stimulating factor, tumor necrosis factor, transforming growth factor, stem cell factor, leukemia inhibitory factor. Erythropoiesis The process of formation of red blood cells termed as erythrocytes is known as erythropoiesis. It is enhanced by decreased level of oxygen in the blood which signals for the secretion of erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is the hormone central to the formation of red blood cells. It takes on average two days to be completed to form mature red blood cell from unipotential hematopoietic cell. Two million erythrocytes are produced every second in our body. Granulopoiesis The process of formation of granulocytes is known as granulopoiesis. Granulocytes, they are white blood cells having multilobular nuclei and cytoplasmic granules. Monopoiesis, the process by which monocytes are formed is known as monopoiesis. So in erythropoiesis, you can see in the figure, the unipotential cell becomes pro-erythroblast, which has uncondensed nucleus and a basophilic cytoplasm. Then the cell becomes a basophilic erythroblast which is followed by a polychromatophilic erythroblast stage. So in this stage the nucleus becomes more condensed than the latter two stages and the cytoplasm is reduced. In the succeeding orthochromatophilic erythroblast stage the nucleus is much smaller than the other two stages having a finger cytoplasm. Then comes the reticulocyte stage where the red blood cell lacks nucleus but still stains somewhat blue because of the remnants of polyribosomes within the cell. Finally, the erythrocyte is the mature red blood cell with no nucleus and no polyribosome remnants and as a result stains pink. In granulopoiesis, the unipotential hematopoietic cell forms a myeloblast that is large. It has a cytoplasm that stains blue with a large nucleus. This cell will then give rise to promyelocyte that contains azurophilic granules. Then it becomes a myelocyte which has a non-intended but large nucleus. This cell will give rise to metamyelocyte which is similar to the size of a mature granulocyte and the nucleus starts to become indented. Okay, that means there will be an invagination, a bending. You can see that. Hmm? After this stage is the band cell stage where the nucleus resembles a horseshoe and has definitive indentation. Then finally, there is the mature granulocyte having a lobed nucleus and cytoplasmic granules. So, this figure shows neutrophil maturation. This entire process occurs over a period of two weeks. In monopoiesis, you can see in the figure, myeloblast is formed from common myeloid progenitor and monoblast is formed from myeloblast. The monoblast is the committed progenitor cell found only in the bone marrow. It has a basophilic cytoplasm without granules. These monoblasts give rise to promonocyte 
which is smaller in size with nuclei that becomes slightly indented before becoming monocytes. Monocytes have a kidney shaped nuclei and they can develop into dendritic cells or macrophages. Lymphopoiesis The formation of lymphocytes starts from their first committed progenitor cells, lymphoblast. This process is called lymphopoiesis. These cells after maturation are able to differentiate into either B cells, T cells or natural killer cells. Thrombopoiesis Megakaryocytes which are extremely large cells within the bone marrow form the platelets. This process is termed as thrombopoiesis. When the plasma membrane of megakaryocytes are fragmented, the origin of individual platelets take place, thus generating platelets containing many granules. So this is all about hematopoiesis. Thank you.